Drilling and producing oil and gas offshore is a risky business. Offshore installations are complex beasts. Thankfully, accidents offshore are rare, but when they do happen, the results are often catastrophic. These are the top 10 deadliest offshore accidents. The CP Baker accident took place in the Gulf of Mexico, off the southern coast of the US at Eugene Island. The barge was being used for drilling operations when the rig suffered a well blowout, allowing gas into the hull. Water began to pour in and spread throughout the vessel due to the doors on the main deck being left open. It wasn't long before the whole barge lost power and within a few minutes of the blowout, an explosion caused the vessel to be engulfed in flames. The crew were forced to abandon ship, but just 22 of the 43 workers aboard survived by jumping into the sea. This accident took place off the coast of Mexico in October 2007. The Yusama Center Jackup drilling rig collided with the CAB 101 platform operated by Pemex during stormy conditions. The cantilever deck of the platform hit the well production trees, causing a release of oil and gas. Crew members tried to close the safety valves of two production wells on the platform. However, they were unable to completely close them off. As the leak got worse, the 81 workers on the rig had to abandon platform in the rig's two lifeboats. They tried to get to the safety of the supply ship Morrison Tide, but unfortunately, both lifeboats suffered damage in the heavy seas, with one of them capsizing. 22 people died during the evacuation. The release on the platform continued for some days before it eventually ignited and the resulting fire ended up with the collapse of the drilling derrick before the fire was finally brought under control. The Mumbai High North platform was operated by India's state-owned oil and natural gas corporation. A minor incident triggered a chain of events that eventually led to disaster. A chef on board a support vessel working near the platform, the Samudra Saraksha, sliced off the fingertips of one of his hands while preparing food. It was decided that he needed emergency medical assistance and there was a medic on board the Mumbai North platform. In stormy conditions, vessels are not usually allowed anywhere near the platform, but an attempt was made to transfer the chef to the platform. Unfortunately, a strong swell pushed the vessel towards the structure. It hit the platform's gas export risers, causing a leak of gas. The gas release ignited, followed by an explosion, which caused significant damage to the platform, the support vessel, and the noble Charlie Yester, a jack-up rig operating nearby. It also created a huge oil spill, but crucially, 22 people died in the aftermath. The Enchova Central Platform is located in the Campos Basin near Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. On 16th of August 1984, a blowout caused an explosion and subsequent fire on the platform. The majority of the workers aboard were evacuated via helicopter or lifeboats and survived the accident but many others weren't so lucky. One lifeboat was being lowered to the sea when the bow hook failed. The boat was left dangling vertically before plummeting 20 metres into the sea, killing 36 people inside. Six other deaths were due to workers jumping from the platform into the sea when they were left with no other way out. In total, 42 persons died in the accident. Bohai 2 oil rig was operating in the Gulf of Bohai between China and Korea and was at the time the oldest Chinese owned oil rig in operation. On November the 25th 1979, 
The rig was being towed when it was hit by a fierce storm. The high winds broke the ventilator pump, creating a large hole in the deck, which quickly became filled with water. This flooding, along with the existing adverse weather conditions, eventually caused the rig to capsize. To make matters worse, the crew members had not received proper training on emergency evacuation procedures or the use of life-saving equipment on board, and the accompanying towboat could only rescue four of the 76 workers on board. 72 workers perished in the accident. The Glomar Java Sea was an American drill ship owned by Global Marine. In October 1983, it was conducting operations for Arco China, 63 miles south of Hainan Island, in waters disputed between China and Vietnam. A tropical storm, Storm Lex, approached the drill ship from the east. The crew shut down operations and they reported to the company office in Texas that they were experiencing 75 knot winds over the bow. Suddenly, the main office lost contact with the ship. The rescue effort lasted a week before search vessels discovered the wreckage some 300 feet underwater. All 81 workers on board died. Only 36 bodies were ever recovered and the other 45 crew members remained missing, presumed dead. The Ocean Ranger was a semi-submersible offshore drilling rig and in 1982 was one of the largest rigs in the world, able to operate in 1,500 feet of water and drill to 25,000 feet beneath the seabed. It was owned by the Ocean Drilling and Exploration Company and had been hired by Mobile Oil in order to conduct explorations in the Hibernian field offshore Newfoundland. During a large storm, a huge wave damaged the port light, allowing an ingress of water into the ballast control room, which caused the ballast panel to start malfunctioning. As a result of the malfunction, a number of ballast control valves opened, causing the platform to list. This allowed more water to flood the forward chain lockers and into the columns, leading to a loss of buoyancy that caused the rig to capsize. There is evidence that some workers were able to escape from the rig in lifeboats, but they were not able to be recovered by the standby vessels. All 84 workers aboard died in the freezing seas. The Seacrest was a drill ship, also known as the Scan Queen, owned by the Unocal Corporation. In November 1989, it was operating 430 kilometers south of Bangkok at the Platong oil field in the South China Sea. A tropical storm, Typhoon Gay, hit the vessel with 40 foot high waves and winds of over 100 knots. The drill ship was reported missing the next day and on the 5th of November was found capsized by a search helicopter. Investigators concluded that the rig had capsized so quickly that there was no time for the crew members to issue a distress signal. It was suggested that the drill crew had left drill pipe in the derrick, making the vessel top heavy and unstable going into the storm. But blame was also attributed by some former crew members on the addition of a top drive to the drilling derrick in a previous modification, which affected the stability of the vessel adversely. All 91 crew members lost their lives. The Alexander L. Keelan was a Pentagon-type semi-submersible drilling platform owned by Stavanger Drilling Company of Norway. In March 1980, the rig was on hire to Philips Petroleum and was being used for accommodation for workers on the Edda oil platform. On March the 27th, 212 workers were being housed on the Keelan when it had just pulled back from the Edda platform due to worsening weather. Suddenly, just before 6.30 at night, those on board felt a loud crack. One of the rig's five columns had failed and split away from the rest of the installation. 
the rig immediately listed 30 degrees and over the next 15 minutes or so continued to list further. Four of the rig's seven lifeboats were launched but only one managed to release from the lowering cables properly. Eventually the whole rig capsized. The failure of the column was later traced to a small 6mm fillet weld which joined a non-load bearing instrument connection into the D6 bracing. The bracing failed which, due to the non-redundant design of the bracing on the rig, overloaded the column which severed from the rest of the platform. 123 of the 212 crew were killed and the memorial was erected in 1986 to commemorate the victims of this tragedy. The Piper Alpha disaster is by far the deadliest offshore oil rig accident in history. The platform off the coast of the UK in the North Sea, operated by the US company Occidental, was one of the country's largest producers, around 10% of the UK's total oil output. In 1988, a communication error led to a deadly mistake. On the morning of July the 6th, a safety valve had been removed from a gas condensate pump for maintenance, and the pump was placed strictly off limits. However, that information was not properly passed on to the shift managers later in the day, who proceeded to start the pump. When the pump was started, the missing safety valve caused the condensate release, which ignited. This started a fire which escalated further when flames impinged on the gas riser nearby, heating up the riser which eventually ruptured. The platform, totally engulfed in flames, was completely destroyed and large parts fell into the sea. The crew had not been properly trained in how to deal with such an incident and their panic was what led to many of them losing their lives. Many of the victims went to the temporary refuge where they remained expecting to be rescued, but rescue never came. When the block was retrieved from the seabed weeks later, 87 bodies were found inside. In the end, it took three weeks to get the fire under control and just 61 of the crew members on board made it out alive. 165 of the platform crew were killed, as well as two rescue workers after their rescue craft was hit by falling debris. The world's deadliest accident claimed 167 lives in total. The subsequent culling inquiry into the accident paved the way for greatly improved safety standards offshore in the UK and was replicated in many countries across the world. A couple of honourable mentions that didn't make it into this list. In 2010, the Deepwater Horizon accident in the USA Gulf of Mexico, killing 11 people. But this accident is best remembered for the environmental disaster following a blowout on the rig which was one of the largest environmental disasters in US history. Finally, the Sea Gem, where 13 crew members lost their lives in the UK North Sea in 1965. The accident, often referred to as the North Sea's forgotten disaster, paved the way for massive changes in safety regulations and practices in the industry. I will be going into more detail on those last two accidents on later videos. So if you've liked what you've seen so far, please like and subscribe for more videos so you'll be the first to know when those videos are posted. Thanks for watching.